Um, well, cool. I am here with Jack Webb, high school senior, uh, committed to play uh, at Johns Hopkins. Jack, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure yeah, to be here. I always, yeah, this is going to be awesome. I, I love chatting with goalies of all, uh, of all ages, of all levels, and this is going to be tons of fun. Um, but before we get into that, do you remember the very first time that you stepped into goal? I do. I was in third grade. It was for our in-house league, um, and we didn't have our goalie show up for one of the games. And at the time, I was like, you know what? I'll step in the goal. It seemed pretty like exciting thing to do at the time, and it was exhilarating. You know, there was an adrenaline rush that I got that I didn't, you know, have playing, you know, on the field as a midi or an attackman at the time. And ironically, my uh, my um, not my club coach, my my travel team coach, he was the, his son was also on my in-house team at the time. And he saw me play and he was like, you know what, let's stick him in goal for the travel team. And that's where it all started. And ever since then, I've been kicking it in the goal and doing my thing. I love it. What, what do you like about being a goalie? I had a lot of the adrenaline rush that I get through, you know, stepping in front of shots that are going, you know, a lot faster than, you know, most objects should be moving. Mm -hmm. um, at the time when I was pretty young, you know, having shots that were maybe 60 miles an hour uh, was something that, you know, got me, you know, pretty jittery and, you know, excited to, you know, step in front of, which is kind of odd to think about. Um, but it was something that made me excited to step onto the field and get myself out of the house. Um, I enjoyed the team chemistry that I got with the defense and being able to, you know, have that bond with guys on my team. Whereas with, I uh, was a midi or uh, an attack, and I really wouldn't have that kind of, you know, chemistry or bond with those guys. So that was something I enjoyed a lot as well. Yeah. I love it. So you grew up, um, or you're still living in the Baltimore area, sort of a hotbed of lacrosse. At what age did you start to get, uh, some goalie training? I started, um, around my freshman year with uh, Andrew and Mike Gavazdan for Goalie Smith. They DM'd me through Instagram my freshman year and I was sort of skeptical about it in the beginning because, you know, DMing kids through Instagram was sort of not like, you know, I guess you could say a professional way of like inviting kids out to do something. But I took the chance with them and ever since I've been in absolute love with their company, with their coaching staff and the guys that they bring in as shooters and goalies. And ever since I've just you know, I've been working with them weekly and it's an absolute pleasure to have them in the Baltimore area as well now and to be able to see them and, you know, be able to reach out to them whenever I need to. Yeah. I've had those guys, uh, goalie Smith guys on the show twice. I yeah. think maybe the only two time guest I've had, um, on the, on the podcast, they're just amazing, amazing mm -hmm. goalie minds. Um, you know, the, what they do with the live camps, I think is the best in the, mm -hmm. in the industry right now. Um, so yeah. I'm totally on board with what those guys are doing and love them. They're awesome. I completely agree with that. Yeah. So freshman year of, um, high school is really like the first time you get some, some, some training, like all third grade up until freshman year, it's just relying mm -hmm. on raw athleticism. Uh, not just that. I think for me, my work ethic with shooting with guys after every single practice and on the weekends when we had off days was something that sort of carried my, my, uh, skill level to like where I was prior to joining goalie Smith. I wouldn't say it was like raw athleticism that, you know, was the main, you know, source of my skill, but I, I definitely had, you know, guys constantly shooting on me after practice that kept me, you know, in touch with the sport. Got it. Got it. How do you describe um, your style? Like every goalie kind of plays a little bit different. Like what height, what weight are you? How do you set up in your stance? What's your arc? Let's, let's talk yes. about that a little bit. So I'm one of the smaller goalies. I'm 5'9", 155, 160 on a good day. And I stand, I stand, yeah, I stand on a very, very low crease. So my back heels are basically on the goal line. Um, and I have a pretty wide stance considering how small of a guy I am. And the reason why I do this is because I've been taught through goalie Smith to be patient and to wait sh uh, for shots uh, while like the windup is happening. And for me, having that wide stance and being back on my goal line allows me to react, have a longer reaction time to see and explode two shots. Um, 
I'm pretty still in the goal. I'd like to say I don't like stomp my feet anymore. And I think I've seen a dramatic change in my play since then. Um, I like to move the ball up the field quickly on fast uh, to force fast breaks for our offense. And I think that's something that, um, you know, a lot of goalies should uh, take a part of that game. Um, and then another thing is that I enjoy, you know, being the loudest guy in the field, uh, being able to, you know, command, command my defense in a way where they know exactly where the ball is, exactly who's hot, well, you know, what our slide package is and, you know, our picks, uh, stuff like that, you know, it's something that I take pride in and that's something that, you know, I guess I could say would be a big part of my game. Yeah. So interesting. You found success, um, with that style being the size that you are, cause that style is kind of what you see a lot of the taller, bigger goalies, mm -hmm. you know, Matt DeLuca yeah, in the, in the PLL, I think he's six foot five. Right. And he, he gets out real wide and really mm -hmm. like covers the six by six with his frame. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also small and my style was more like out at the shooter, you know, a little bit of a, I'm not going to say high arc, but like a medium arc. Um, to cut down that angle and kind of rely on my quickness. It just goes to show what I've said so many times on this podcast is like, there's a lot of different styles. You got to try them all and find what works for you. Cause you as a smaller five, nine goalie, have had success with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, were there anything that you tried style wise or technique wise that like you realized this is really, this is not for me. Like I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. So for me, it was playing the higher arc. I did that when I was a little bit younger, maybe my sophomore or freshman year. And the reason why I did this was because I wasn't taking up as much of the goal as, you know, most of the taller guys. And I thought because of playing that higher arc, it would take up more of the goal and I would be able to, you know, force shooters to shoot at me or away from the goal. Um, and when I was doing that, I was having difficulty moving around the, the goal as the ball was, you know, circling uh, the crease yeah. Yeah. and it was difficult for me to get into position or staying set before shots because I was still trying to get towards the spot that I needed to be set before the shot. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I tried was, you know, setting up more like tall because I was a smaller guy and I was giving, you know, a foot of room when I was, you know, in my stance beforehand. Yeah. And I found that I was toppling over because I was leaning on my front, uh, on the balls of my feet a little too much. And I was constantly falling forward. And when that happens, A, you're not able to explode as fast as you can. And B, you're giving off more rebounds because you are exploding towards the ball more versus laterally. So that was something that I found through goalie Smith that they taught me. And that's why they put me in that wide and low stance. Love it. I love it. Um, apart from the goalie Smith guys, like who, um, what other goalies do you sort of look up to learn from like, like to watch? I really absolutely love, um, Jack and cannon. I think he is a really explosive and exciting goalie to watch. And he also has that wide stance that I prefer. Um, and he, you know, uses it, he gets his body in front of the ball that I really like. Um, and, um, another couple of guys that I like to watch when I was younger, we would go to all like these boys, Latin McDonough games. And I'd look up to, you know, Jack Pizzula, who's the UNC goalie, uh, Chris Brandau, who's now at Maryland and then Alex road, who's the Virginia goalie. And there were guys that, you know, I would take bits and pieces from of like their leadership role to how well they threw their outlets to how well they commanded their defense and all sorts of things. So there's a ton of guys that I look up to in this position. Nice. Nice. I'll have to get all those guys on the podcast. I haven't, mm. I haven't chatted with any of them yet. So <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you about travel lacrosse because, you know, I grew up in California in the 90s and there wasn't even any lacrosse to like mm -hmm. to begin with to begin with. So travel lacrosse is kind of a new concept for me. And a lot of the coaches, not coaches, a lot of the parents asked me, you know, at what age should I be getting my kid involved in travel lacrosse? At what should I be looking for um, in a program? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So for me, I started travel, I think, later in the process compared to most guys. I was seven years old. Most guys really started in that travel process uh, when they were like four or five. So they had a couple of years ahead of me. Four and or then five it, years old? Yes. Yeah. Baltimore's Jeez. crazy. So like, <laughs> it's crazy. It is crazy. 
And then once we would get into like middle school, we would move up to the, like the club level. And that's where all like the big, you know, named club teams like Looney's FCA crabs, 91, all those Maryland like club teams that are pretty well known move up to. So I think the, for a parent's perspective, it's best to get your kids involved as early as possible because it creates those long lasting memories and relationships with those people who you end up growing up with, you know, cause mm -hmm. I have guys who I still go to high school or play on the same team with that I've been playing for or playing with since I was seven, you know, I've got a kid named Michael Hawes who's going to Georgetown who I've been playing for more than 10 years together now. And it's, you know, we mm -hmm. have that sort of friendship that, you know, wouldn't have happened if I didn't start that early. So. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, do you play other sports? Like, do you take a break or do you, are you I, lacrosse year round? I used to, um, prior to Corona hitting, I was on the volleyball team for my high school. Um, and it was sort of that one to two month break of lacrosse that I had, um, that like helped hit the reset button every year and allowed mm -hmm. me to like, get more excited about the sport in the beginning of the season. Whereas if I were going all year round, it'd be, you know, not that I'm saying it would get dry, like I would dry out or I wouldn't like, wouldn't love the sport the same, but I'm saying by hitting that reset button, it allowed me to get, you know, even more excited and, uh, you know, want me to get pumped up for the, the upcoming season. Yeah. I think goalies need that. I think goalies need a break. Um, I mean, in addition to like playing something else, uh, like in, and developing kind of some other skills that you learn in different sports, like you just need a mental break. Um, like exactly like you said, so that you, you look forward to getting back on the field, um, mm -hmm. especially as a goalie where you just take a pounding, um, in practice and it, you can get worn down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go through a period where you're like, man, I'm just feeling really, really beat up, really worn down, really not, not into the sport as I, as I have been. Um, I wouldn't say I wasn't like into the sport anymore, but I would say there was definitely a mentally draining moment in my career. It was my sophomore year and I had just come up from uh, JV and I was on varsity now. And I was sort of believing that, you know, maybe I could be the starter on the varsity team. And that wasn't the case. I went through a pretty, you know, I guess, depressive state where it became super toxic and my mentality of myself sort of diminished. Mm -hmm. And it created like this idea that I wasn't like, you know, able to move forward in the sport, I guess, you know, to the next level in college or even high school. And it was, uh, it was not, a, it was not a good thing, um, at all. And I, you know, looking back on it, wish I could have done some major things differently. Mm. How did you, I mean, how did you overcome that? I actually, um, so in the summer of my going into my junior year, I sort of told myself, you know, there, let's, let's put high school aside and focus on the summer and lacrosse. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I focused on the summer club circuit I did pretty well. And I was able to, you know, rebound myself to where I was back in sophomore year. And then I guess even more so than now, uh, with goalie Smith, my, uh, my like view on myself as a player, man, and, uh, lacrosse player, I guess, sort of increased a whole lot more throughout this past summer. And that was what got me out of that, I guess, state. Love it. Love it. Um, and now you are, and then you're start, you're starting goalie. I uh, will still have to earn that spot, but yes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, at Loyola Blakefield, is that, is that the high school? Correct. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And before we hit record, we were saying that, uh, or you were telling me that STX sponsors and I was just saying, wow, it's amazing. The, the, these, uh, pro, you know, lacrosse companies are, are sponsoring high schools now. It's just awesome. Yeah, it awesome is. Stuff. It's amazing experience to have them as a sponsor now yeah um and then uh you are committed to play at johns hopkins congratulations sir that is an awesome awesome accomplishment um i was wondering if you could explain what the recruiting process was like for you yeah so it was actually a very roller coaster ride uh, um so my junior year going into my junior year on september 1st i ex i didn't get a single call for about a month or so. And, you know, I would see guys, you know, already committing and stuff like that to, you know, top schools. And I still haven't gotten my first connection. Uh, I read, originally saw Hopkins take a goalie ahead of me and it was absolutely devastating at the time, but I knew that to get over it, you had to just keep working and, you know, they'll end up, you'll end up finding your spot. 
you know, Coach Hyken, who's my club coach and my assistant at Loyola, he would tell me that, you know, 99% of the time, the process works out for everybody. And, you know, I had other schools call me eventually in the end of October. Um, and I went on a couple of visits. And at the, at the end of all of those visits, you know, Brown was the one that was like number one at the time. And they ended up leading me on for about six months. And the reason was because of test scores and because they wanted to see me start on one of the varsity games. Um, eventually that never really happened because Corona hit, which canceled a lot of the SAT testing days and the varsity schedule. Mm -hmm. And they eventually took the Hopkins commit in my class. So that opened up a spot for Hopkins. And with Milliman now coming in and after Petro and his group leaving, Milliman now needed a goalie. So once that happened, I had all of my high school coaches, my club coaches, and then Andrew and Mike reach out and absolutely blast his phone. Mm -hmm. And eventually Milliman, you know, took the bait. He did some, uh, he did some um, um, research on me you know, what kind of uh, player I was, stuff like that, and eventually reached out to me. And within a matter of weeks, I ended up committing. So it was pretty crazy at the time. I wouldn't change a thing about it because it changed me as a player. It uh, humbled me incredibly. And it was an experience that allowed me to have certain relationships that I probably wouldn't have had if it weren't for the way things ended up. Yeah, so. great story. Great story. What about even before that? Like, how did you even get on those guys' uh, radars? Are you, you're uploading your clips to YouTube? Are you emailing the coaches? What, how do you, uh, how'd you go about doing that? And what do you recommend to, to kids who, who want to follow in your footsteps? Yeah. So I think for the most part, for me, I was very fortunate to play on one of the more well-known club teams in the country. Mm. So a lot of the coaches would actually attend our games for the fall and the summer and that's sort of where I was recruited. Um, I did reach out to her colleges through emails uh, by sending them, you know, an, inter an introduction of who I was and would send like my stats, you know, my accolades. And then at the bottom of the email, I would send my like highlight tape. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of colleges would reach back, some wouldn't, some would like wait it out and see, you know, maybe we'll come watch you in the next, you know, tournament that you're at. And eventually, you know, some schools reached out and some didn't. And that's how pretty much it works. I think uh, one major thing, excuse me, I didn't mean to cut you off, but one no, major thing I uh, do suggest players do is they reach out to their high school and club coaches to reach out to the colleges that on their behalf. Because that's how most of uh, the recruiting process works for me and for my teammates on my high school team. A lot of the high school, or, uh, high school guys would have my head coach, Coach Ubriaco, reach out on behalf of them. And that would eventually get the coach's interest in that one player. It's good advice. That's good. It's good advice for uh, not just lacrosse recruiting, but for anything. I mean, you, you've probably heard the expression, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and, you know, you. say again. Who knows you? My mom always says, it doesn't uh -huh. matter who you know, it's who knows you. There you go. Uh, but so much about like having success is just those connections that you build. And yeah, I mean, you know, if you've got a coach that, that knows them, I mean, Mike Gavazin went to Hopkins, right? If you got someone who went to that, you know, who went to that school, like why not have them reach out on your behalf and, and just do everything you can. So um, I love that. Love that advice. Uh, what do you do training wise, like physically training wise, apart from taking shots? What, what would you say like your regimen is to prepare your, your body to be an elite goalie? I uh, truthfully don't actually like lift at all. Um, and I'm not, it's not like I hate lifting at all. It's just, I would rather take shots personally. Um, for me, it's watching a lot of film with my defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator on the team. I like to be able to know exactly what's going on with offensive uh, units and um, formations and stuff like that. So I think watching uh, film is a big part of, you know, getting to where I am today, I guess. And uh, mostly taking shots though, that that's quite honestly the biggest uh, way that you can grow yourself as a goalie. So, yep. 
Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to put you in the weight room at Hopkins. I hope you're ready for yes, that. No, 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 <laughs> it's aware. great though. I, I recommend that all goalies hit the weight room. And the reason it's not so much to like, like, I mean, yeah, like the strength and building up muscle in your body, like it helps, but not as much as like for a field player who needs to like rely on that strength mm-hmm. to, to dodge and defend it. For me, it's this mental piece, you know, mm-hmm. like you get, you add like 10, 15 pounds of muscle to your body and like, up up like in your head you're you're so much more confident and that's Mm -hmm. what translates into saves for me yeah so we'll we'll talk again in a year when you're 15 (laughs) pounds of muscle muscle heavier (laughs) 24 7 yeah uh what about other sports i think you mentioned you played volleyball um growing up was was there any like soccer was there any basketball and any other sports growing up yes i played soccer and wrestling um Soccer, I was a midfielder, which helped me with my cardio. Um, I eventually stopped playing that to focus more on lacrosse, along with wrestle, uh, with volleyball. Um, but I think a lot of them gave me, you know, different t- views on, like, how my athleticism can carry over to lacrosse. Um, like, with soccer, it was the ability to just be able to sprint back and forth. Because when you think of our sport, it's not really a conditioning sort of position. It's more of a sprint stop sprint stop sort of thing and when you're playing you know soccer it's sort of like that as well it's not like non-stop you're always running in the same pace it's always you know cutting back and forth you know sprinting at a certain point and then stopping and putting on the brakes Uh, for volleyball it was a lot of footwork communication and relying on your teammates you know and that was something that helped me a lot through the, the rough period I had my sophomore year Um, It showed me, you know, what it meant to be uh, a teammate to others. And that's something that helped me uh, grow as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting that you're a wrestler. I was also a wrestler and I've talked to quite a few um, lacrosse goalies who are wrestlers. And Mm -hmm. to me, like there's no sport that will build mental toughness as fast as, as wrestling. Um, cause it's an indiv- it's like, it's an individual sport. It's just you it's one-on-one. And especially if you have to, um, if you're dropping down, if you drop weight, like, you know, y- you gotta be really fit and the dedication that it takes to diet and, um, exercise is, is really, is really intense. And, and it taught me to be mentally tough. And I just take that mental toughness and plug it right into the, to the goal, because guess what? Goalies need to be equally as mentally tough. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I would agree with that completely. Yeah. Um, and then not to mention, like, there's something to be said about like a low save and like kind of like the way you drop your body. I mean, it's very similar to like a, like a shot or like a, you know, a high crotch, high crotch type of move mm-hmm. um, in wrestling. So wrestlers and goalies, two, mm-hmm. two peas in a pod. <laughs> uh, besides shots, what are your other favorite like uh, goalie drills to do? Uh, I love doing hand eye. Um, that's something that we focus on a lot before our warmups for school. We do ball drops where we'd have a partner hold both balls and your hands would be on top of your partner's hands. And as the ball would like drop, you'd go and grab the ball while it's in the air. And you do that, you know, multiple times until you, they like lower it all the way to the point where you can't catch it anymore. Another one for me is like partner, like ball tosses where uh, both you and your partner have two to three balls and you're basically juggling with each other, trying to focus on the uh, logo of the ball. And that helps Mm. you you focus uh, on like one thing at a time that should translate into the game where you're only focusing on the ball, like during the shot. Um, Another drill that I like to do is, um, you know, step ladders and stuff like that. I like to work on my lateral movement. I don't have like exactly drills that I like to do. I just try to move back and forth laterally as fast as I possibly can um, to get my you know legs warmed up before shots and game. So awesome. Yeah, those are good drills. Um, huge fan. I'm a huge fan of the hand eye coordination stuff. I, I know there's some goalie coaches that don't that don't mm-hmm. do it, and I think that's a shame because it is something that's trainable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had, I had like a, a hand-eye coordination specialist on the podcast who like, that was his field of study. And he said, yeah, absolutely. Like you can train your body to react to stimuli and get quicker. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, you got to do that. I mean, it's part of part of being a, a great goalie. And it also helps with hand speed as well. When yep. you know your partner passes, when you're doing the partner passing drill, you know you're moving as fast as you possibly can, which helps your hands warm up and you move faster and faster and faster while like doing these drills repetitively throughout your uh, career. Yeah. Yep. Um, if you had to go back and give the younger Jack, the younger Jack Webb, uh, some advice, um, knowing what you know now, what what would that be? That would probably be to not stress out about everything. Um, mm. You know, when I was younger, I struggled mentally with letting goals in, and you know, it would ha- it would get into my head sometimes where I would end up playing worse because of it. Um, I think I would tell my my younger self to sh- just to enjoy the moment and play happy because when you play happy and calm, you're a lot more focused on the game versus your emotions, right? Mm. If you're angry, you're focused on you know the next play. And if it doesn't go in, then you got to, you know, you're angry, even more angry, but if you're calm and relaxed and happy, you know, you're focused on enjoying the moment and that's what helps you focus on the cross itself. I think. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, I, I, having fun is a huge, is a huge element of one enjoying the game, right? I mean, just having fun, like you're playing lacrosse with your friends. I mean, there could be way worse spots to be in, uh, in this yeah. life, but then too, like when you're having fun, Goldie's you're like, you're relaxed and, and you're in the moment and that's, that's, that's what you gotta be. So, you know, yeah. that that's mental toughness there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned you're a loud goalie. Like you like to, you like to kind of use that voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, where did that come from? How did, how did you learn that? Cause I would say the ma- vast majority of goalies like when you first start out they're way too quiet Mm -hmm. i don't exactly know where it came from to be honest i just knew that like at a moment it just clicked where i had to be the loudest guy in the field um and it's not because like oh i gotta do it because the coach said it. it was more because you know i wanted my teammates to be able to like hear what i was trying to say if i were like making sure the guy who you know is playing on the crease he needs to know where the ball is at all times so that way he's not you know focused on just his player or he's just focused on the ball. You know what I mean? So if I'm the loudest guy, everybody on this, on the field can hear what I'm saying and it allows us to work as a unit and not just as individuals. Yeah. So that's where it happened. Yep. Love it. Yeah. Um, like I said, most goalies are way too quiet and it is a skill that you've got to, uh, you've got to develop. And a lot of it takes a little bit of confidence too, because sometimes <laughs> when goalies are just starting out, they're like, well, why would they listen to me? You know, mm-hmm. you're like, slide um yeah. like a que- like a question um as opposed to like you know you know what's going on um so it, co- it comes with with some, with with time and comp and um experience i think uh what about i mean you, we just recently just recently touched on kind of mental toughness about how you used to get get give up a goal and kind of get all down on yourself um what's changed or what, what have you done to um become mentally tough Um, There's a lot of like key phrases that I use, Um, you know, when I was going through that period of like struggle of mental toughness, I would have coaches and players who also went through the same thing, help me by, you know, telling me to focus on the next play. So my coach Hyken, who I mentioned before, you know, he taught me the phrase, so what next play? And when I was younger, he made me write it on my glove so that if I ever needed to like you know, focus on something, he would tell me to look down at my glove during the game. And I would say, I would see, so what next play? Another mm-hmm. thing that, uh, that, you know, helped me was when I was shooting with Logan Wisnowskis and he mentioned uh, the reset button. And he said it was like something that their boys Latin team did at the time where they all got these bracelets that had like a little clicker on it. And the idea behind it was that every time you would press that button on the wristband, it would be a reset button for you. And mentally it would tell you, you know, just to calm yourself down and start over. Um, another thing that I, I like to do is if I'm playing bad during a game and I need to walk off to the sideline for a timeout or at the end of the quarter, I would end up taking my helmet off and then I'll put it back on sort of to symbolize myself, you know, getting like walking back on the field for the first time, right? When you strap mm-hmm. on first, you know, it's supposed to symbolize you getting ready for the game. So Yeah. Interesting. That brought up a couple other ideas of, of what I've heard some, some guests on this podcast talk about. One, um, 
Dan Morris, who played at, at Maryland, uh, he said that at halftime, if he was having a great game, helmet stays on. Right? Exactly. What I'm keep, keep it locked it in. Keep it locked in, right? If, you, if you're not having a good half or even a good quarter, helmet comes off. And then, like you said, when you put it back on, cool, fresh start. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing it made me remind me of is, um, did you attend any of the, um, the goalie summit, um, sessions that, that I put on? I don't believe so. All right. We're going to do another one. The goalie Smith guys are going to, are going to, um, present. So make sure you sign up for that. Um, anyway, uh, Jack star, who's the goalie at Yale, uh, mm-hmm. talked about the reset routine, uh, mm-hmm. that, that their team does. And it's exactly what, what you mentioned. It's, well, first of all, it's deep breath. I don't think you mentioned that, but maybe you do do that. Like after you give up a goal or after a bad play happens, like mm-hmm. full deep breath, right? And that'll help calm your nerves and get, get a little more in the present. And then it's um, some sort of like verbal um, phrase. And for you, yeah. it was like, what did you so say? Like, next, So what next play? Love it. Yep. Um, you know, your, his was, I think like, quick athletic goalie or something like that. Just something to remind him to like pump himself up. Like that's, that's who he is, right? You gave Mm -hmm. up a goal. Yeah. But that's not your idea. You're this quick athletic goalie. And then Mm -hmm. the third one was some sort of like physical action, some sort of physical move that you would do to reset. And that's exactly what you're talking about with the, with the, with the clicker. So um, all the goalies listening out there, work that into your, work that into your routine because super important that you're able to reset after you give up a goal. Mm -hmm. Not about the, setback it's about the comeback i read that i'm gonna start using it (laughs) um would you call yourself a leader of your lacrosse team um i would say i'm one of the many of them i guess you could say um our position in general is you know put you know forced into being a leadership leadership role um because you're meant to be you know the general of the defense but i think for all the teams that I've played, there's always been guys who are vocal leaders, leaders by through their play and so on. Um, you know, I've been quite fortunate with, you know, my career. I've been able to play with guys like that where I'm surrounded by guys who have that same mentality of, you know, the team, the team, the team versus me, 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 me. You know what I mean? So, and that's something that I prefer playing around is guys who, you know, put the team first versus themselves. And with loyal, that's every single guy, you know, we all trust in one another. We all put each other ahead of ourselves. And that's something that I am very grateful to have in my life. So. Love it. What about when you arrived to Hopkins day one, what's, what's your game plan for letting those, letting that group of guys know that, that you're a leader. Um, I think it's going to take time at first, uh, I'm not going to, you know, come out and be like guns blazing, like I'm the man or something like that, because I think that's a horrible way to go at it. Um, I think, you know, I'll let my play, you know, speak for myself and, you know, off, off the field, I'll let my, you know, experiences with them, you know, dictate whether or not, you know, I can be a, that same sort of leader I am at Loyola and maybe bring that over to Hopkins, I guess. Yeah. Great answer. Great answer. Yeah. I mean, you can't day one go in there and, you know, have the same attitude that, you know, the four year, fifth year seniors have because you haven't earned it. You haven't mm-hmm. earned it yet. Right. You haven't earned that trust. You haven't earned that respect. And that does come with, with time. And it comes with, um, you know, showing these guys that you're here for the right reasons and you've got the right work ethic. Um, and then you, and then you earn that. So mm-hmm. awesome. Awesome. Do you coach any goalies? Like, not i wish i did and the only reason why i don't is because i actually can't drive so it's difficult for me to travel like and mm. coach the gun guys so i i wish i did and if i and if i did i would probably be through goalie smith um i've talked to andrew a couple of times about the idea and he was like you know if you ever want to coach some of the middle school guys i'll give them off to you and then you can do your thing and use our platform to help get you off the ground so yeah Got to get that driver's license, my man. Coming in <laughs> 10 days as of this podcast. So Come, we're getting coming in what? 10 days? 10 days. 10 days. All right. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's actually very interesting. When I started coaching goalies, uh, I became a much better goalie myself because in order to like explain it and to really analyze 
like a goalie's play, you need to understand the position at a whole new level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you'll find like, as you're coaching goalies and then, and then someone asks you a question and you're like, crap, no idea. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't know everything there is to know about, about being a goalie. Right. I mean, there's some questions that parents ask me. I'm like, great, great question. I'll go research it. And you go in there and you now you're like finding out <clears throat> answers to things you never even knew. So I think, I think coaching is, if you can, is awesome. Mm -hmm. And giving back to the game. I mean, it's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's part of the, part of the culture of lacrosse that I love so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are you a big pregame? Uh oh, I'm sorry. You cut off just a little bit. Yeah, hang on a second. Um, can you hear me? I can't hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. All right, we're back. Uh, the question was, um, are you a big pregamer? Um, sort of. I have a couple of things that I like go through my routine. I love listening to music to help me calm myself down or to get my you know blood moving or the adrenaline moving through my uh, myself. Uh, I have some superstitions, which is kind of stupid because it like, like sort of has that mentality of like, oh, if you do this, then you want to play well. But it's something that I just do just regularly. Um, I don't chew gum before I play my game, which is so stupid. Um, but I do <laughs> listen to a lot of music before a game to help me calm myself down um, and try to focus on, you know, what's going on. I like to read through the playbook a little bit before the game or our um, – or watch a little bit of film on the other team, stuff like that. I like to go through the scouting report, you know, just memorize, you know, the, uh, what hands each offensive guy is, what they like to run in certain sets, if they're running uh, a zone off or if we're running zone defense, what they like to run on their zone offense, stuff mm -hmm. like that, that I just go through just to make sure, you know, I'm all set before games. Awesome. Uh, I've heard way worse superstitions than not chewing gum before the game, by the way. <laughs> I'm stuck I'm stuck um, with it. Who told me? I think it was Brian Phipps. He was like, I had to have a blue, a blue Gatorade, blue Gatorade uh, before every game. Yeah. I think he told um, me that when he was coaching uh, my, uh, the Nike team that I was on. And then coach Turnbull, I don't know if you've heard the interview with him. He watches like two episodes of the office or something before every game. <laughs> Have you heard that one? No. Where, where would I check that out? I'll, I'll, I'll search for it after this. It was, um, it was on one of the ESPN interviews that he did with like Paul Carcaterra or something, but we bring it up yeah. at practice all the time when he's around it. So it's kind of, it's kind of funny. We give him a hard time about that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what is your, uh, what's your stick setup? What do you, what do you go with I, on the stick? So I use an STX Eclipse 2 yeah. and Shaft sort of the like it's been interchanged a couple of times this past month. It was the String King uh, Composite Pro during the summer. Then I moved to the Hypercore, the Maverick Hypercore shaft, and now I'm rocking an all black setup. So I had to move to a black uh, STX Psy Tie shaft. And the mesh that I use is uh, Grizzly One S, and uh, on the black one because they don't have black mesh in the Grizzly One, I have to use Grizzly Two X, which is their hard mesh because the soft one just bags out and is not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you uh, do you string your own sticks? I do, and I uh, I don't know where I when I started stringing them, but I've been stringing them for a very long time, and I like to think I'm pretty good at it now. Um, a lot of guys come up to me and I end up stringing sticks for them, which is something I find, like I find joy through you know, just being able to give guys the ability to string up a stick for them. Nice. Love it. Uh, you have to send me, you have to send me a, a pic of that all black setup. Um, oh, I will. Sounds, sounds pretty nice. Yeah. I'll send sounds you pretty nice. Well, cool, Jack. Thank you so much for coming on the, on the podcast and kind of sharing your experience. You know, there's, there's, um, probably a lot of goalies who, you know, are a year or two under you or even four or five, six years under you who kind of want to replicate that, that trajectory that you're on and um, hearing your story and sharing your experience of how you got there. And even, you know, understanding that it was a lot of times like you see someone post like, Hey, I'm committed to Hopkins. Right. And you mm -hmm. see that on Instagram and you don't know all the work and all the, like, you don't know about your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't know about those dark, those dark places. Cause you don't post that on Instagram. 
Uh, right. So, you know, it helps, it helps to hear that like, Hey, even though like I've made it to this, this peak, like you didn't see everything that I went through. So thank you very much for, for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you had to leave the goalies with one last uh, piece of advice, what, what would that be? Uh, work hard at everything that you do. Um, there's never a moment in your life. If you think that you deserve something that you should give up or not work hard to achieve it. Um, Every time you step on the field, raise your goal or your standard more so that you're able to compete at a higher level than you did the last time you stepped foot on that field. Um, I love it. Jack, good luck. Good luck at Hopkins. So you're going to, you're going to be there starting next, next season. Correct. Yes. So, okay. uh, yeah. Cool. And when, um, when do you start talking about like red shirting? I hope that's not an option, but I don't know. Um, okay. I was just curious. Um, I guess we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll have you back on the podcast in two years and we'll, we'll, we'll chat about it. <laughs> Jack, have a great day. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. Cause Damon. Cool. I'll let you know when it comes out. Absolutely. All right. All See, right, ya. Bud. See ya.